Have you undergone a breast lift or reduction and your breasts have gotten droopy again? Well, with time, this can happen to anybody and pretty much everybody who has those surgeries. And the bigger your breasts are, the faster they are going to redroop. Some patients tell me, well, if I have a breast lift, I'm never going to have to have a lift again, am I? And the answer is, unfortunately, not necessarily. Okay, The bigger your breasts are, the older you are, the um, more stretched out your skin, the less you wear a supportive bra, all of those will contribute to redrooping of your breasts more quickly than if you have smaller breasts, if you have uh, tighter skin, if you wear a bra regularly. Okay. Now, if your breasts have redrooped though, after having a lift or reduction, we do have some good options for you to treat it. So let's start by talking about what the causes of redrooping are. Well, pretty straightforward, time and gravity. Okay. If you have a breast reduction or a breast lift and you have, um, and, and you uh, have had that many years ago, then just time and gravity is gonna cause your breast to droop. And as I mentioned earlier, the bigger your breasts are, if they're, especially if they're excessively large, the quicker that's gonna happen, okay? And so that's why breast lifts and reductions are not permanent, and someday you may have to undergo a relift. Now, if you have weight loss, that can also contribute to the breast redrooping, okay? And so some people find that it's not even so much that the breasts have actually dropped, but that they have deflated and they have loose skin, making them feel droopier, okay? So that's another cause. Also, women who've had uh, pregnancies, multiple babies, especially if they've breastfed, that can also predispose to breasts that have gotten droopy again uh, and that maybe a patient would like relifted. Now, it is extremely important for you if you are considering uh, have, treating a redrooping to bring your previous medical records with you to your face-to-face uh, -face consultation, okay? Very, very important because having these records will tell me exactly how your previous surgery was performed and will allow me various options uh, in knowing how to, to proceed from there, from here on out. So call your previous plastic surgeon, get your previous operative report. If your plastic surgeon does not have it, then call the surgical center that you had surgery at and see if they can get it. If you absolutely can't get any of those records, then we can still proceed with your surgery um, but we are limited in what we, we may be limited in what we can do, and I'll explain why. So if, let's say, you don't have records available, if they've been gone, if they've been purged, and it's just absolutely impossible to get them, they just don't exist anymore, then what we might have to do is called a skin-only breast lift. And what that means is that we can still lift your breasts, okay? We can um, re reverse that drooping, but I can only do it by cutting out the excess skin. What I can't do is I can't rearrange the internal architecture of your breast to lift the tissue back up higher and let's say secure it into a higher position. So if we do a formal breast lift, it entails removal of excess skin with uh, taking the tissue that's dropped and, and relocating it up into a higher position. But if we don't have those records, then all I can really do is just remove the excess skin, okay? And that doesn't make the lift quite as powerful or as shape-changing as if we can rearrange, once again, the internal architecture of your breast tissue. And this is the same lift that is similar to when people have implants put in. So if you have implants with a lift, usually we, what we do is just remove the excess skin. We can't necessarily rearrange the internal tissue because too much has been cut for placement of that implant. So in general then, if you can't get your records and we have to consider a skin-only breast lift, that can still remove the excess skin, it can still bring your nipple back up into a higher position, but you just may not be quite as round and have quite as nice shape as if we could do more. Uh, the surgery itself typically uh, is done under a general anesthetic, so you're completely asleep. Uh, the surgery itself basically is cutting out the excess skin and suturing things back together. Typically you would have a, a scar around, circum, circular scar around your areola, then a vertical scar, and then a scar underneath your breast. The surgery takes about two and a half hours, uh, and then after the surgery is over, uh, you have a bra on, they bring it into the recovery room where you stay there for about a half hour to an hour, and then you head home. Uh, there'll be a little bit of discomfort with it, but it's usually not that bad. Most people take pain pills for maybe a day or two. Uh, most people are driving a car as early as three to four days after surgery. You come back to see us at a week. At a week, we change the little stereo strip, all the little tapes over your incisions, make sure everything looks good. Um, you can start exercising at three weeks, and it will take four to six months for all of your swelling to go away. 
and it can take a year or longer for all the scars to mature. Now, if you've had a lift or a reduction before, obviously that's why we were doing this, uh, then you know kind of how scars heal on your body and that's gonna be your best indication of how those scars are gonna be. Now, the risks of the surgery, bleeding and, and infection are always the first things we mention. There's risks of thick scarring. Even if you didn't scar poorly with your first breast lift or reduction, you may scar poorly with this one. You just don't know. Um, so we always recommend scar creams even if you scarred well with the previous one. Uh, there are risks of some unevenness. You know, one breast may not look exactly the same as the other. There are risks that uh, your breasts may redroop a bit afterwards. Uh, because I'm not doing a whole lot to the inside of your breast, I can't because we don't have those records. We don't want to make cuts that cause blood supply to the nipple to, to, be, um, to be disrupted. Uh, it does uh, allow us limited ability to reshape your breasts. Um, there are other potential risks such as uh, blood clots, um, and we cover other risks as well in the time of your preoperative um, visit as well as your face-to-face -face consultation. So if we don't have the records and a skin-only breast lift can be a definite option for you, it can really help. It can definitely help. I don't want to poo-poo this option, but it can definitely help to get rid of the excess skin and um, bring the nipple up into a higher position. But once again, it's a bit limited as to its uh, ability to reshape the breasts. If, however, you have your previous records available, then we could consider doing another formal breast lift uh, for you. And uh, this could potentially allow us to um, move some of the internal breast tissues around to give you a nicer shape. And I see that I have a bit of a typo there instead of performed if previous surgical records available, it says pervious. So um, it doesn't mean that, it means previous. <laughs> uh, Overall, if we do have your records, that tells me how the surgery was performed before, and that allows me to know how I can do it this time, hopefully very safely, and that allows me to do a better lift and hopefully get you better results. So once again, uh, call your previous plastic surgeon, get that information from them. If, if your plastic surgeon doesn't have it, call the surgical center you had your previous surgery at and have them send you the records from your previous surgery, and definitely bring it with you to, a, to the face-to-face -face consultation. If you don't have it, then we're gonna have to have you come back uh, for a second visit, and that's just gonna waste your time and my time coming back in when we could do it all at one time. Uh, so if you're considering another formal breast lift, uh, take a peek at the section entitled First Time Breast Surgery, Breasts Are Droopy. And I go over all the different breast lifts uh, in that um, section uh, in detail, including the recovery time and how the all scars are. But typically you'd look at a scar that would go all the way around the areola down and underneath. The recovery sometimes is a little more difficult than a skin only breast lift. You may or may not have a pair of drains in. Um, and so once again, go to that section, first time breast surgery, breasts are droopy, where I'll go over all the details of that surgery in that section of the pre-consultation videos. Well, if your breasts have redrooped after undergoing a lift or reduction, we can lift them again. We can either do it with a skin-only lift if we don't have your previous records, but if you do, hopefully we can do a formal lift again to get you looking and feeling uh, better. Thank you so much for watching.